Right. So kicking off from where we stopped the last time, um, we have been able to open up our Chrome browser by setting the web driver manager to open up Chrome browser for us. And we've also declared an instance of driver as well. And we've also been able to tell Chrome driver to navigate to a specific URL using the driver.get URL method. And when the URL is opened up, we have then instructed Chrome driver to also maximize the window and basically make it the size of our laptop screen resolution as well. So the next thing we're going to try to do, I think I've done it. Um, I sort of started it in the last class, but we're going to continue. We'll start all over again, basically. So we are, we were looking into locators. So if you are trying to understand what locators mean, you can go back to watch the other video. I'm not going to repeat it again. I'm just going to go straight into it. So we're going to be trying to get um, the locators for our first name and our last name field. So this was the URL, or this is the URL we are testing. So we're trying to get the locators for the first name field and then the last name field. And another thing I wanted us to first do is you can see that we've got like a cookie button down here. So instead of starting with the first name field and the last name field, I want us to get a locator for the cookie button here. Because whenever you have a cookie button on your page, I'm going to click either accept or okay or decline or whatever button you want to click on. But in our case here, we have the okay button and we are going to try to get a locator for the okay button and tell Chrome driver to click on okay once the page or once the website is loaded up. So how do we do that? How do you get a locator for anything or for any of the fields or any drop downs that you want to get? You need to just right click, right click on the page, then click on inspect. Then it's going to open up the HTML DOM for you. I'm trying to see, am I using Chrome? Yeah, I'm using Chrome. So it's going to open up the HTML DOM. So this is the HTML DOM that we have here. And it basically contains the code that has been used to build this website that we're currently testing. So I'm trying to get a locator for the OK button. How do I get locators again? You click on this icon that says select an element in the page to inspect. Once you click on the icon, you can see that it is showing in red. Previously it was showing in white, but once you click on it, it shows in blue, sorry, blue, not red. So it's currently showing in blue. And then all I need to do to get a locator for any element or any field on the page, I just need to go to the field or the icon that I want to get the element for, click on it. Then you would see it's already referenced in our DOM here. You can see that section for the cookie button is highlighted in blue. And like I mentioned, you can get your locators by either ID, expat, um, partial link text by name, um, by um, which other one? A lot of other locators that are available. And I also want to make sure that I also want to ask that I hope that um, the resources link I've sent, like the updated resources PDF I sent. I added a couple of links in there last week and I resent them last week, Wednesday or Thursday. And I'm hoping that everybody has gone through each of the links to understand the topics and terminologies and keywords that we have been learning so far. I sent a lot of, I added a lot of links there and I hope you've all taken time to look through it. There are some things I'm not going to go in depth at all in this um, training course. I'm just going to go through the basics and all I'm expecting you to do is to improve your own knowledge by actually looking into those resources and also improving your understanding on the different keywords as well. So um, I just wanted to put that out there that I hope you're actually looking into those links. So moving back into our cookie element or locator that we're trying to get. So I said we can get locators by ID, expert, partial link text, link text, name, tag name, 
there are different ways you can get locators. So if you look into the locator resource link that I sent, you will find a lot of information on the different types of locators available, how they look like, how they are constructed, and every other information that you need. And even examples in the sample codes on the blog page on how you need to write those locators as well. So we have located the element for our cookie button, which is the OK button. And this is it highlighted in blue here. So these three lines are what is related to the cookie button that we have here. And you can see it says ID equals CN dash accept dash cookie. So I'm going to use locator by ID for the cookie button. And I'm going to click on that. You can see I clicked on it and you can see the CN accept cookie is highlighted in blue. And I'm just going to copy that. And I, another thing I mentioned in the last class is you need to always ensure that the locators that you're getting are unique. You don't want a locator that is going to be showing one of two or one of three. Your locator needs to be one of one. So one of one means that it's only used by that specific element that you're trying to inspect. And if it's showing one on one, that is good. That means that you can obviously use it in your code. So um, in order for me to actually check that my locator is unique, it's going to be showing one of one. All you need to do is to search you search for that locator within the DOM as well to make sure it is only used in this instance down here on the cookie section. And how do I search for the locator that I have just copied? Remember that I've copied that. I've copied it, but I want to search for it and make sure it's only unique in this specific section. All you need to do, if you're using a Windows, you do a Control F. If you're using a Mac, you do a Command F. So you need to do the Control F or the Command F inside your DOM. So I'm just going to do Command F. And you can see this section popped up. There's a new field here, like a search box field. So if I press Cancel, I'm going to do it again. And you see it pop up. Control F or Command F. And you can see it's already popped up. And I'm going to paste the locator that I've just copied. And I pasted the locator, it's showing me one of one. So that's excellent, means that it is unique to only this specific location for the cookie button. And you can see when I clicked on it, you can see it's also highlighting it down here for me. So when, you, so when you've copied the locator and you've, you're searching for it, it should show one of one and it should also highlight the element that you're trying to inspect as well. So I've clicked on it, I've searched it, and it's also highlighting it down here that it is relating to the OK button in the cookie section. So what do I need to do next? I need to go into my step definition in my IntelliJ and specify or tell Chrome driver what I want it to do with that element that I have just copied. So how do we tell Chrome driver to perform an action on an element? So I'm going to ask the question now. So for this cookie button, what do I want my Chrome driver to do for me? Do I want it to enter a field? Do I want it to click on something? Do I want it to select something from a drop down? What do I want it to do for me? Can I get a quick response, please? Enter in. Sorry? Click the OK button. Yeah. So I want my Chrome driver to click on the OK button for me. So the action that I wanted to perform is clicking. So if I go into my IntelliJ now, under my, and I fill out the first name and last name field, what I'm going to do is call the driver instance driver dot. So I wanted to find the element that I'm going to give it to find. So driver dot find. Element, you see, there are two find elements that came up. There's find element and there's find elements. So find elements with the S is when you have like a list of elements you wanted to find for you on the page. But in this instance, our own element is unique. And we're only going to use the singular version, which is find element. So I'm going to click on driver.find element, press enter. And how do I want it to find the element? I want it to find it by ID because in my DOM, you can see the HTML attributes that I have clicked on or I have copied is the one for the ID. 
you see it says id equals cn dash accept dash cookie and that's what i've obviously copied as well so back in my intellij i'm telling it to find by it's going to give you an option so like i said for locators you can find locators by id expert by class name by link text partial link text css selector name tag name so there are different ways you can find your element by so i'm going to click find by id so i'm going to pick the very first one that says find by id not the find by dot by id but instead find by id so the very first one that pops up on the screen i can or i can just if i don't see find by id on my screen find by id i can just type the id fully myself and i'm going to pick the very first one that pops up so when you click on that you need to paste the id that you've copied from your html dom in your intellij but before you paste it since it's a string you need to add double quote i'm guessing that's what it's called so you need to add double quote in that bracket then you paste it there then you can see that it is showing in green if I don't add the double code and I paste it there, it's going to show in white and red. And that's not what I want. So I'm specifying the little mistakes I know that people are going to make. So you need to specify a double quote, then paste your locator that you've just copied inside that double quote. So now that I've um, told um, Chrome driver to find this element by ID, the next action I want you to perform. So when you find, when Chrome driver finds the element, what do I want it to do? I want it to click on the cookie button for me. So the action that I'm going to specify Chrome driver to do after finding the element is to click. So I'm going to do a dot. So when I did a dot, there are different actions you can tell Chrome driver to do. You can tell it to send keys. So you send keys when you're trying to fill in a field. So the first name and the last name field, for example, where we're going to be typing something inside, we are going to use dot send keys. So for the dot click, so dot click is basically, as, as the name implies, you're telling Chrome driver to click on an element. And that's what we need. So another action you can tell Chrome driver to do is to do a dot clear. So a dot clear in this instance is going to be in a text field as well. So where you've written a value in and you want Chrome driver to delete the value. So instead of saying dot delete, you say dot clear. So that's what you do. That's when you use dot clear. And then we also have another action that says dot get text, which is the one here, dot get text. So dot get text could be a case of um, you've got, um, you would always use dot get text when you're trying to do like an assertion or a validation on a page to, or when you're trying to compare um, an expected value and an actual value, that's when you use dot get text. So dot get text will basically get like a string value on the page and compare it with what you specified in your code. So that's when you use the dot get text action. But like I said, since we are trying to click on the cookie button, we're going to use a dot click action. And that is us done for the cookie button. But before I move on to the first name and the last name field to specify the action I want Chrome driver to perform, I'm going to run my test now. And I'm expecting um, Chrome driver to open up Chrome browser, maximize. So it's going to open up Chrome browser using this line of code on line 18, then it's going to navigate to this URL that I've specified here. Then it's going to maximize my Chrome browser to the screen resolution of my laptop. And then it's going to click on the cookie button for me. So those are like the four actions that I'm expecting Chrome driver to perform for me now. And I'm going to, um, run my project and I noticed something. So there are two things that happen. So you may be lucky and I don't know if it's because I'm using an older version of IntelliJ or something, but I always have to rebuild my project to um, tell IntelliJ to pick up the latest changes that I've made. So rebuilding is basically a form of also saving your project 
but IntelliJ saves automatically. But when it comes to like picking up changes when it's running your code, my IntelliJ doesn't do that. But you may be lucky. You don't have to be rebuilding your project every single time. But just in case um, it doesn't pick up any latest code that you've done, you always need to rebuild your project. So you click on build and then click on rebuild project. So it's basically going to rebuild the project with all of the new changes that you've added. Then you can then go on the um, inquiry page dot feature. So I'm going to right click on that and click on run and it should open up Chrome browser for me. Now get to the URL, maximize the screen and click on the cookie button. So let's see what happens. I think that rebuild thing is general. Yeah, I have to do that too. Okay. And I'm using 21 IntelliJ. Right, so load it up, maximize, click, amazing. So you can see it loaded up the screen. It loaded up Chrome driver, Chrome browser, sorry. Loaded up Chrome browser, navigated to the URL, maximize the screen, and then it clicked on the button for me. So now I'm going to move on to the very next step which is still inside my AND step that says, and I fill out the first name and last name field. So I've just only done the cookie button. So I need to do, um, I need to get the locator for the first name field and tell Chrome browser what action to perform on the field for me. So how do we do that? We need to go back to our same URL and locate the, get a locator for the first name field. So we come back here, click on the icon, then move it to the first name field. And I'm going to click on that. And you can see it's highlighted the section for the first name field for me. And in this case, like I mentioned, there are different ways you can get um, your locator. So the first one that we've done is ID for the cookie. The next one we're going to do is X path for the first name field. So we're going to use three different locators today. We're going to use ID, we're going to use X path, we're going to use name for the cookie button, the first name field and the last name field, then we call it a night. So I'm going to get a locator for the first name field and I want to get the X path locator. So how do we get an X path locator? We just need to right click on um, the section of the elements that we're trying to get. Then we need to go to copy, then copy XPath. So there are two types of XPath. There is the relative XPath and the absolute XPath. And um, the correct XPath that you need to use is one of them. So I'm gonna show you an example of a relative XPath and I'm gonna show you an example of an absolute XPath. So let me just see what this one is going to give me. Okay. Let me see what the other one is going to give me. Amazing. So let me open up. Um, text edit. I think X pack is a bit shorter, while the other one is a bit longer. Yeah, there, there are two types of X pack. I think someone is not muted. So can you kindly mute your mic, please? Uh, let me see. Uh, 
trying to figure out which of the X ones is the right one. I always get in confused. I'm going to test. Relative and absolute x bar. My way I've stopped sharing. I'm just trying to look for the link that I had open up for this one. Okay, the next part. Right, I think I didn't find a real resource I'm trying to look for, but. I I found something. So let me just reshare my screen again. So, like I mentioned, there are two types of expat. There is the relative expat, and then there is the absolute expat as well. So um the absolute expat is what we always want to use. And that is the one, good. Let me copy the other expat that I add. Copy for expat. So the absolute expat is the one we always want to use because it's the one that has the actual path from the element to the desired from the root element to the desired element, while the relative expat is basically referencing the elements from the very beginning, and we don't want that. So any expat that starts with slash HTML slash body slash dev, we do not want to use that one. We do not recommend you to use that one. And the type of expat you should be using should be the absolute expat, which is something like this. As far as it does not start with slash HTML slash body, you're good. But if it starts with slash HTML slash body, you do not want to use relative expat in your code. You should always use absolute expat. So I'm going to send the link into the group. I also think I have it on the PDF document as well, but I'm not sure about um, absolute versus relative expat, what you need to know about them and any other information as well. So I'm going to look for the link again if it's not in the pdf document and i'll send it to the group chat so moving on we always want to use the absolute x path and how do you get the absolute x path you just right click on the html code for the element you're trying to get go to copy and click on copy x path so once you click on copy x path you should then paste the value of your x path in the search box and we can see it's giving me one of one. So that means it's only unique to the first name field 
is only unique to the first name field, basically. And you can see it's also getting highlighted as well. So that means that I can use that in my code. So now if I move on to my IntelliJ and I need to tell Chrome driver to perform an action on the first name field for me, how do I do that? I still do the same element by, this time around, I'm, I wanted to look for the element by XPath because that's what I've copied by XPath. Get my double quotes again and I paste the XPath I have just copied. And then what action do I want it to perform? Can someone tell me what action I want my um, Chrome driver to perform on my first name field for me? Send. What do I want it to do for me? Send keys. Send key. Good. So I want it to send keys. So send keys means that it's going to send the value inside. It's going to type a value inside the box for me. So I'm going to do a dot send keys. And what value do I want to send? my first name. So I'm going to send my name Oying. So I'm going to do the first name and the last name together then I'll run the test. So I've told it to send in a value called Oying. So now I need to get a locator for my last name field. And how do I do that again? Same thing, you right click, click on inspect. It opens up the DOM for you. Then you click on the inspect icon. Then you go to the field that you wanted to inspect. Sweet. So you see, I like that in blue. This is for the last name field. And this time around, I'm going to get the locator by name. And the reason I'm going to use the name is because in my HTML DOM, I can see it has got an attribute called name. And it's also got a value as well assigned to that attribute. So you can see it says name equals WP forms, open bracket fields, close bracket, and all the other values there as well. So all I need to do is to copy that value. And as usual, I need to double check that is a unique one. It's gonna be showing me one of one. And you can see it's showing me one of one here. And it's also highlighting the last name field for me. So all I need to do now is to go back into my IntelliJ and specify um, or basically write my code and specify what action I want the Chrome driver to do for me. So I'm still going to do the same element by, but now this time around, I want to define it by name because that's the locator that I have copied from the HTML DOM. So by name, if you do find by ID, it's not going to look for it by ID because um, your ID locator is different. So you can see the ID locator is different from the name locator so if you are using um, ID in your code and you've copied name locator, it doesn't correspond based on what we have in your HTML DOM. So it's not going to work. So we're going to look for the locator by name. Like I said, name. My double quote again, because I'm getting a string value. And I'm going to also say dot send keys because my last name is a field and I wanted to send an element inside. So I wanted to send a value inside, sorry. So dot send keys, and I'm going to need a double quote again, and I'm gonna send in my last name, and I'm just gonna use O. So now I am gonna tell, so some of the actions I'm telling Chrome driver to do once again, I want you to open up Chrome browser, navigate to this URL, maximize my screen for the browser, click on the cookie button, send in my first name and send in my last name. So I'm going to rebuild my project again, and then I'm going to run my inquiry page dot feature to see what happens. Amazing. So you can see it clicked on the cookie button. It entered my first name, entered my last name. And this is based on the value that I put in here as well. I put only and I put all. And that's why it's being filled in my um 
the web browser that came up. And that's what I'm expecting as well. So that's just what you need to do for most of the other things as well, most of the other fields. Um, so maybe before the next class, you can try for email, you can try for IT. And all you need to do is to um, right click, inspect the element for your IT, get the locator or get the, get the locator for the email or the IT, then come back into your IntelliJ go into the one that says email or go into the one that says it driver.find element by did you find it by id did you find it by expert did you find it by name pick whichever one suits you based on what you've copied and then you do a dot send keys then you send in the value for your email address or the value for your it and then um you rebuild your project then you run the test again then it should work so that's just all you need to do so I'm just going to stop the class here today. I don't know if anybody has got like questions for two, three minutes before I leave. Yeah, sorry, I have a, a quick question. Um, because you're explaining on the what they call on the uh, Mac, but I'm using Windows. So if I want to go to, if I want to get the code from the uh, Google Chrome, how do I get the code from Google Chrome? I mean the HTML, HTML codes. I use Google Chrome as well. That's why I just opened up. That's what I've been using. So what? So where can I can Where do I need to go to get the the code out? Um, can the, someone ask this question, please? What do you need to do? Because I've said it a lot of times. Like, you know, like because you copied some code from the Google Chrome. So how do I get to that stage? Larry, see me tomorrow. Boss, I've been calling you. Didn't pick up my call. <laughs> call I'll call you. I'll call you. I'll call you. Okay. You still need to do the same thing. This is Google Chrome. I have opened up. You right click, click on inspect. It's okay. HTML don't pop up. I got it. Thank you. It's good. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Do we have any other question? I think I saw someone's hand up before, but I didn't pick the person's name. That was Uguchi, I guess, before the before we started the class. Okay, um, do we have any questions? Manuel, you've got your hand up. Okay, sorry. I don't know if you can spare me one. Hello? Hello, you can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Wait, please. You know, what is why I didn't follow up for at least one week. And this video is just being bulky. I'm watching from here to here, watching from there to there. If I get to a step, I go back again. I do one error. It will arrest me since students have not slept. I need help. Oh, seriously. This is really frustrating me. I've been, since yesterday, I have not closed my eyes. I slept around 3 a.m. yesterday. I will watch, I will go back, I will do, I watch, I will go back, I will do. I don't, I don't just get like. Um, I don't know who is willing to help go to with our own step definition. Ugochi, you and I did this thing this afternoon, but I was surprised. That when you came in, the thing has Lola, Lola, we it did is. now. We did. And I was even begging you. I said, Dami Lola, see, I've been watching this video for for a lot of time now. If you can put me through, you so said I should just go back to the video. And since then I've been watching. No, see, all you need to do now is to go back to the last video in the last class that we the main class we had. That's I think is the one on was it not the one done on um first of March? Is it not that one? I don't know what day of the week I that was. I think it's now. Wednesday. Yes, 